Woman, won't you find your voice? Oh, oh woman, won't you find your soul? Woman, won't you find your voice? Oh, oh woman, won't you find your soul? I grew up in a family where I grew up, I had a very strong mother um, and I grew up in a family where women were important and central and you know so 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 I was politicized from, from that space and I had two brothers and I also and I'm the youngest but I was always kind of like you know um, you couldn't do anything and have, have me do something like this and the boys do something different I was very sensitive to that from very early on and my parents also understood you know not to have me in the kitchen and the boys and the, something like that so it was never like that but I was sensitive and sensitized to this thing I remember being maybe I was six and I was at my mom's office and I was whistling and the guard told me you know I mustn't whistle and I said why not and he said well girls don't whistle and so and that was ridiculous to me at six you know so so I think in many ways we are feminists you know from very early on we, we recognize that this, this makes no sense though, who's making up these rules? Um, and then I just got older and older and read more. I was always drawn to women writers um, and women's stories. Um, and then probably more recently, like in the last decade, started calling myself a feminist. But it, it would have all, always have been there. African fe feminism for me means African women African women feminists mobilizing to combat and ultimately eradicate patriarchy. Oh, I mean, so much work has been done, I think. And I, I, and I think with questions like this in terms of how women have contributed to um, transforming Africa, how, how women and women feminists have contributed to transforming Africa, we have the names and I'll, I'll call some, but it's also important there are a lot of people who we would never be able to name. There are a lot of little victories that happen in corners that I don't even know. And I think it's important to, amidst all the names we know, acknowledge and leave space for many names we don't know, we'll probably never know. And many victories, many, many small victories that we might never find out. You know, and I think that's important just to know that work is happening and progress is there because it, it can be such a, um, it can be disheartening because it feels like what's happening you know, it's not happening fast enough or we're still dealing with this um, in this 21st century. But I think we must remember the, the unnamed victories, the little quiet, silent victories. And we, we must believe that they're there and they're happening, you know? I write fiction and my aesthetic is subtle. My, my pref preferable creative aesthetic is subtle. So... I don't know that I have this loud, I'm a feminist message in my writing, which doesn't mean it's not feminist. And so I've often been questioning that, you know, for instance, I wrote my first book and the character, it's of a little boy. And there was a moment where I thought, oh, I wonder if people think, oh, what are you writing of little boys? You know, aren't you supposed to be writing about little girls because not enough is written about little girls or, do you know what I mean? And I thought, oh, you know, am I doing something wrong? So I've had to question myself as well. But what I've come up with today is that, um, there, there are two things that are very important to me, and one of them is creating nuanced, deep, and authentic characters. And I think, I think that's feminist. I think it's feminist not to flatten human beings. It's feminist to understand that we are complex, that we're holistic, and I spend a lot of time and energy creating my characters, what, whether male, female, sexist or not, whatever. It's very important to me in my aesthetic that they are authentic and believable characters and the be believability comes from nuance and subtlety and a sense that we, we are neither all good or bad. And I've decided that that's feminist. So that's at the moment how, how literature and feminism intersects for me. Um, I think, and as someone who's consciously kind of joining the movement out of being here today, because I feel I've been a part of it, but being here at the um, African Feminist Forum meeting is feels like it's solidifying something so so as someone who feels like okay i'm new to a movement in a way 
um, I think from my experience at the at the forum over the day over the past day and a half, um, I think what's important, and there are a few people saying the same thing, is this idea of who are we talking to. So as as we as we gather, which is very important, and organize, we also have to understand how we address people who aren't here, because we're all going to leave this space, this forum, go back into our lives. And in some of our lives, we have spaces where we're with feminists, and in some of our lives, we have spaces where we're not, and we're having to engage. And I think that's how you keep shifting out, because what, what we want is change, ultimately. And the change is in uh, you know, stretching those borders so that um, the movement grows. You know, and I'm quite interested in that. I'm quite interested in those interactions and the different strategies and ways to have them, you know, so that, um, so that we can grow. And I don't know whether my mom would ever call herself a feminist, but I do want to shout out to her. My mom passed away, I think over 10 years ago. Um, but she was so central for me in, in my becoming as a woman. And so she's definitely a shiro. And her mother, my grandmother, who's still living, who is hardcore, um, and also, I doubt, I mean, if I said feminist, you know, she'd, she'd be like, what? <laughs> Femi what? <laughs> you know, which is not to say, and that, I think that's important as we look at our ancestors and we don't disparate, we don't um, look down on that they might not have named, that might not have been the time when they were naming. And we are all about naming now, and that's important, with the no ifs and no buts, absolutely. But I really recognize them and their role at least in my own, my own life. Um, and um, I think women like Amina Mama, um, colleagues of mine or dear friends of mine like uh, Simidele Doseku who do really great work, um, my fellow Nigerian feminists, uh, the Nigerian Feminist Forum that I've been meeting today, you know, women here, women here who are at the, the forum, women who are leading the forum. Um, I think, I think, there's a huge pool of, of, of shiros. I mean, we're all living. I know we're not, we're not, none of us are dead. But I, for me, it's like the living, the, the kind of the, the living people who are breathing life into the movement. They're, I'm very inspired by all those people. And oh, woman, find your soul. And don't let them tell you that this isn't yours. Cause you are yours, your voice, your power, your soul Baby, don't let them tell you that this isn't yours Cause you are yours, your voice, your power, your soul Your voice, your power, your soul Your soul, your voice, your power, your soul Oh, oh, woman, won't you find your voice? Say, woman, won't you find your soul? Cause this is yours, oh, baby, you are yours. Your voice, your power, your soul. Your voice, your power, your soul.